here, my name is Emma. I'm an artist and DIYer. Welcome to my channel. So my boyfriend and I went to a nursery the other day and I saw this adorable snail little figurine sitting on the edge of a pot and I had never thought that you could make something and set it on the edge of a pot and have that be decor that's added to just a regular pot. So I instantly knew I had to try and make it. So I made the snail and then two other additional DIYs out of polymer clay. So there are these kind of pot accessories. They are so, so cute. So I'm gonna teach you in this video step-by-step -step how to make them. The first DIY I'll be showing you is the snail itself, kind of modeled after the original. It turned out way better than I expected and here's how I did it. For this one, I used Sculpey 3, but if I were to do it again, I would definitely use Sculpey Primo, which is a little bit more flexible. I started by warming it up between my hands and then rolling it out into a little log and pressing that down onto a pot. This is just a sample pot and making sure I kind of pull that head out and smooth down the edges. I'll stick it back on the pot later, but I just wanted to have a good base shape to work with and make sure my edges are nice and long so it wouldn't tip over the pot. I then took another chunk of clay, rolled it into a circle in between my hands and then flattened it out. This is going to be the shell for my snail and I'm gonna carefully smush it on to my base and then use my fingers to smear down between the lines because you want it to be really nice and connected. And then I'm using this tool that's actually just from Dollar Tree and I'm making a swirl pattern. This is just gonna kind of be a tracing point for this long piece that I'm going to swirl around and I'm going to use that same little tool to kind of push it down in between and kind of flatten it down so there's no marks in between. I'm also gonna create some ridges along the shell, so I'm just moving my tool in a circular fashion, going around with the shape kind of from the very inside point of the shell out, and that's gonna create a bunch of different sizes of ridges, and then I can also use that tool to make kind of a little bit of an edge along the base of the snail, and then I'm just creating some texture, almost like scales, kind of is how I would describe it. And I'm just pressing that into the base and then I made some antennas. I made a little tiny piece and then I cut it in half with my fingers or severed it in half with my fingers. And then I'm using that same tool to make sure I really push that bottom of it along. You wanna make sure all of these pieces to give the best chance at not falling apart are really smushed and combined at the bases. Once I attached the two larger antennas at the top, I took two teeny tiny pieces of clay and they're kind of mini antennas on the front of the snail's face and I pushed those in just to say, making sure the bottoms are nice and blended. And I grabbed my pot for the second time and I later realized that I could have just baked it directly on the pot, but for this one, you know, maybe you don't have a terracotta pot you can bake it on. You could do this technique as well where I took some foil that was the same width and then I placed my snail right on there and that's what I ended up putting in the oven. So it turned out all right. I did bake it with Sculpey, what did I say? Sculpey 3, so it did crack a little. So I would definitely recommend using Sculpey Primo. And here I'm just using some basic acrylic paint and I painted two shades of green on the body and then a little bit of yellow along the base of the body. And then for the shell, I'm doing this really muted yellow. And then once that was completely dry, I took some brown, smeared it on and wiped it off so it only stayed in the cracks, if that makes sense. And then I did a few highlights and used some clear paint to seal it. I think it turned out so well and I wanna make one for every pot in my home. I really wanna make more of these. You could do different color shells and snails. You could also do different sizes. I felt like it was fairly simple. Also, I didn't do anything to the backside because I'm lazy and you're not gonna be seeing it anyway. I just left it the plain half circle. But if you wanna add another swirl to it and be really professional, you can definitely do that. Or you can be lazy like me, up to you. I posted this next one on my Instagram stories and it absolutely blew up my DMs. Everyone loved it, so I'm so excited to show you it. I made an adorable little frog that hangs off the edge of a pot and here's how I did it. For the frog, I used some Sculpey Primo. I took a nice big chunk out of it because I figured I'd be using a lot. And because Sculpey Primo is a little bit harder, I broke it into sections and then warmed it up between my hands. 
Here I'm making a body, which is just kind of like an oval shape with a little bit more rounded at the bottom. I will end up taking a little bit of that clay away because it ended up being a little bit too big. I wanted to make a really cute, tiny, tiny frog. I then grabbed another chunk of my clay and started making the head. This shape, how would I describe it? Kind of like a triangle on one side and then a circle on the other. So you can see it's kind of got like a beak to it and then I'm just smashing down the more circular side and in the front it's more triangular and I'm using this little tool to blend the two pieces of clay together because you want to make sure they're nice and sturdy. All the edges are nice and blended so we don't have any frogs being decapitated after they've been baked. I grabbed two more tiny pieces of clay, split it in half and rolled them into balls for the eyes. These want to be really on the sides of the head. I have them kind of close to the center. I'm gonna eventually push them out even further to the sides and then I'm using this tool to smash them down. Again, you wanna make sure everything is nice and smushed down and then I'm using this weeding tool to create kind of a ridge for an eyelid. So on the front, I'll have black painting and on the back, it's kind of the back of the eyelid. Then I'm also using that tool to make some nostrils. I grabbed a few more pieces of clay and rolled it out to two little logs, made sure they're the same size because I want the same size arms. These are gonna be my arms. They kind of have a cramp in the middle of them. I'll eventually stick it on my pot and kind of mess around with how I want them angled, but they do both have a part in the middle that kind of goes in a little bit so I'm making sure I do that and then using my rounded tool to smush it to the body to make sure it doesn't break off and I'm making sure I have a ridge in that arm as well I then grabbed my pot to mess around and see how I wanted the shaping I realized at this point that it was a little big so I did chop a piece off the bottom and I grabbed some more clay rolled it out and these are gonna be my legs. I'm gonna roll them out nice and long. These legs are gonna be way, way longer than the arms and they're gonna get a little bit skinnier at the end. I'm gonna smush them onto my body at an upward angle and then fold them down. Make sure you attach them really nice and well and then I am actually going to pinch them a little bit. You want them to be skinnier than they would naturally be. So I'm just kind of pinching the knees to make them nice and skinny and pressing it down. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, taking it up and then folding it back down and pinching that knee to be nice and skinny. And then I'm also gonna take that foot and fold it back up. Now these parts aren't gonna be super important unless you're putting it in a clear container because guess what, it's not gonna be super seen. I then rolled out a very, very skinny piece of clay and I'm doing four fingers on each of the hands and then three fingers or toes, I guess, toes on each of the feet. To make the correct shape, I'm rounding out the edges and then making a little bulb at the end by rolling it and then smushing them onto the end of the arms very, very carefully, making sure I don't smush that bulb and trying to keep everything intact as best I can. It was actually easier than it looks. It seems like it's super complicated, but you're just gonna lightly smush it around and this clay is pretty flexible, so you'll be able to kinda move it around and mess it around later. And then you wanna try to smooth it out as much as humanly possible, but because we're painting it, it's not like super, super important. And you're gonna do that on both hands. And here I am double checking my work. I'm doing the same thing for the feet. I did have them be ever so slightly longer, the toes and I'm only doing three per foot, which again, you can't see it a ton when it's in the pod. It really depends on what type of container you're putting it in, but I have three per foot. I'm then gonna put it back on my pot to check it out. I wanted to have that foot kind of hang over a little bit, so I have both of the hands over and then I'm kind of pressing my foot down over and making sure everything's nice and smooth how I want it. And then I ended up putting a skewer diagonal from the bottom up don't judge my dirty oven, <laughs> it's gross. And that's what I put in the oven so it wouldn't like slide down or something. And it survived the oven, thank goodness. It turned out super cute and no cracks because I used Sculby Primo. It's nice and flexible. I wouldn't like throw it or anything, but you can move it ever so slightly. I then took some greens, some black, blue, yellow and white, and I'm gonna make it kind of a bluish color for the base. So I had to 
do maybe two or three coats and I just did the whole thing in this blue teal color before I moved on. I added a little bit of white to that color to do the very tips of the hands and the feet. Those little bulbs are going to be just a very slightly different color. So I'm giving it a little <laughs> pedicure and manicure. And then I also added some of those highlights to kind of like the elbows and the knees and I took some green and put it right around the ridge of the eye just to give it a little bit of extra dimension and then tapped it along right the middle of the face. And then I took my black and this was the most satisfying part. I painted in my eyes, being very careful and trying to make them as even as possible, just with some solid black. I took a tiny bit of that black paint and put it in the nostrils as well. And then also the mouth. I kind of messed up on this part, but I figured I would just shove some black paint in there. And then I went back with some green and kind of covered up any of my mistakes. So no worries there. I grabbed some white and I made two dots along the right corner and then I made even tinier little bitty bitty dots right underneath those. I took some more of that highlight color and I also did some detailing to the back which I mean who's gonna see it it's not super important and finished it off with some clear acrylic paint to make it nice and shiny as frogs are supposed to be. I love the way it looks on this glass vase I'm absolutely obsessed you can see the little feet but it looks so cute on a regular pot as well peering over the edge. I think the frog is probably my favorite one. It is a little bit trickier than the others, but at the end of the day, you really only are gonna see a little bit of the hands and one foot, so it doesn't have to be perfect or anatomically correct. I love how it turned out, and I definitely recommend you try it. This last DIY is a Luna Moth that's kind of sitting on the edge of a pot. Now, you don't have to do a Luna Moth. You can do any moth or butterfly, but I know Luna Moths are super popular. I have a mirror in my Etsy shop that has a Luna Moth on it and people go absolutely wild. It's a bestseller in my shop. So I decided to do a Luna Moth hanging on the edge of a pot and here's how I did it. For the Luna Moth, I thought I'd be fancy and mix my own clay instead of relying entirely on paint. So I chose some white Sculpey Primo and then some green Sculpey Primo. And then I also mixed in some Sculpey 3, which is translucent or translucent Sculpey 3. And I felt like it did nothing. So I, I would skip that part. And then as you can see, I also added in a little bit of yellow. You could also totally just paint it at the end and do everything in white so you don't have to buy any colors. But I rolled it out nice and flat. And then I used this little tool that's actually meant for weeding on the Cricut and I sketched out the outline for my Luna Moth. If you can't freehand or you're not comfortable freehand drawing, you could also print out a photo of a Luna Moth and cut it out and then use that to trace it. But I make Luna Moths all the time, so I have them entirely memorized. I used an X-Acto knife to cut it out, and then I realized it wasn't the exact length I wanted or the tail wasn't so I added a little piece at the end and then I made sure that was the length I wanted and cut that out as well. I then started planning out my body and kind of sketching it out with this little tool. The wings overlap so you can see that's the top wing and then you probably would be able to see kind of lines from the bottom wing as well. And then you can make a bunch of little lines coming from the inside going out. These are just ridges that are going to give it a little bit of extra dimension. I then grabbed some white Sculpey Primo and rolled it out and I'm going to try to make that little teardrop shape but make it three dimensional. I wanted to make that end really really nice and pointy and then I'm pressing it down on there and I will use a tool again to create kind of a fuzzy texture. Luna Moths kind of have like this fuzziness in the middle of them and then I'm really making sure I press down those edges because I want them to be joined together. Then I did a little experimenting. This one was definitely the most experimental one and I took a little bit of that extra green and I just like the snail kind of pushed it around the edge so I knew I had a ridge and smashed that Luna Moth on there. And then again, this is totally experimental. I wasn't super crazy with how it ended up laying. It still lays on there, but it's not quite as sturdy as the other one. So maybe I would make it bigger or make it go down a little bit more, down into the pot a little bit more. Now here, I'm just taking some yellow Sculpey Primo and I'm cutting out 
I guess, more almond shapes and using my X-Acto knife to make ridges in them. These are supposed to be the little antennas, which have all of these really fine ridges. And then I'm smushing them onto the back of the Luna Moth. As always, making sure I really try to join the clay together so there is as little breakage as possible. I added some foil along the edge of the pot because I wanted to make sure I'm kind of pressing those wings out and then the tail of it was kind of sagging so I added a little bit of foil along there as well and this is what it looked like before I put it in the oven. It was really hard to put it in the oven so I didn't get a video of that but because I used Sculpey Primo it's nice and flexible and I don't think it's going to break. It's going to be a lot more durable and it's super cute as is but of course I am a painter. I had to paint it. I mixed some red and blue paint to get purple or you could just have purple paint and you're going to do along that top ridge and then there's these little lines that come down. If you look at Balloon Moth, it's almost like eyeballs in the top. And then these are supposed to be open circles in the bottom, but I messed up and I ended up just filling them in. I took some yellow and white and added it to the top. And then again, those look like eyes. So there's like a little kind of curve shape for an eye. I added some white around the edges and on these lines as well. And then these circles, this was very uh, delicate to do. Those circles at the bottom are supposed to have yellow in them and then a dot of purple and a dot of white underneath. Now you don't have to go this extreme, do all these tiny little details, or you could get a smaller brush, whatever you want. I finish it off by taking some of that clear acrylic paint and putting it just on the wing part. So that part's nice and shiny, but you can see it looks so cool. It looks like a Luna Moth just landed on your pot. You could also stick it to the branch of a plant or on a hanging planter. The options are endless. As I said, you could do any butterfly or moth for this. The one I chose is a little bit more complicated, but obviously there are way more simplistic butterflies and moths if you're just starting out painting or using polymer clay. To make this a little bit more stable, I really wish that edge that hung over the pot was a little bit longer and kind of went into where the dirt is just to act as a counterweight because it naturally wants to hang like this is the Luna Moth and this is the pot. It naturally wants to hang like this rather than at an angle like the way I wanted it to. So I wish I had added a little bit more weight to the other side or something to stick into the dirt just so it wouldn't be so topsy-turvy. An alternative is you can also get museum wax and put a little bit on the inside of the curve that sits on the pot and that'll make it sticky so it there's no chance of it falling off. The museum wax would also be really helpful if you want to stick it on the branch of a plant as well. And that is it for all of my DIYs. I hope you enjoyed. I've really been loving making stuff out of polymer clay. So if you liked this video, make sure to let me know if you want to see more of this type of content. Be sure to follow me on here, Instagram, TikTok, all of that good stuff. I'm always posting behind the scenes on my Instagram and polls, and I would always love your feedback. Thank you so much for watching and happy making.